So the first question is why was why was the um, moon red? You saw that kind of pinkish orange color that the moon was when I showed the eclipse? Why was it that color? That was totality, by the way. The moon was completely in the Earth's shadow at that point. The, the, the light of a million sunsets. All right, so basically the sunlight had gone through the atmosphere around the edge and only the red light made it all the way through and kind of, it's not directly hitting, it's kind of scattered on the moon, giving it that lovely color. Okay, are we ready for this? I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> So, um, if you have a calculator and some paper and pencil, please get them now. begin by practicing a couple of simple things. You know, in, in um, physics we have a lot of old standby things that we do because the math works out easy. This comes from the days when people didn't have calculators. Um, and we're going to stick to a couple of those. What I'm going to do is, we're going to start here. I have a rocket, which I will make a thousand meters long, which by the way is a really long rocket. But this is to make our lives easy. So I've got a rocket that's a thousand thousand years long, and I'm standing here on the earth watching this thing fly by, and I see it flying by at a speed of 0.8 C. Find gamma. All right, this is a rigged number, so you'll know you've got the right gamma if it turns out to be a pretty simple answer. So you don't need to know any other than just, that's my, that's my V. By the way, if you were choosing, which of these would be the S frame? It'd be easiest to make me the S frame, right? And which would be the S prime frame? It'd be the rock. All right. It's it's not <clears throat> necessarily the way that we have to do it, but it's it's usually the easiest way, All right? Since I'm the observer who's looking at the rock. But that's not the question here. All I'm asking you to do is find gamma based on this. So did somebody get an answer to that? Point 0.6. 
all right? So it equals 1 over 0.6, which is the same thing as saying, uh, uh, I'll do it this way, equals 1 over 6 tenths is equal to 10 over 6. All right, so basically I'm trying to show you this is a rig run. All right, so 10, 6 may not seem easy to you, but trust me, mostly gamma is an un undecipherable mess of digits. But this number works out nice and tight. And by the way, reflexively, at a point 60, it works out to be 10 eighths because of the nature of them. So they just go in all expressions. Okay, so let's do this. When I say that the rocket ship is 1,000 meters and I'm going like this, what have I given you? What length have I given? I'm proper. Proper length. So I'm saying if I'm standing in the rocket ship and measuring that 1,000 meters is the proper length of the rocket ship. So what's my symbol for that? I'm saying L is equal to 1,000 meters. What I want to know is what is L? In other words, how long does the rocket ship look to the guy on Earth? And I've got the equations up here for length contraction. What do I do? So the L, by what I've got over there, is equal to 1,000 meters divided by gamma, which is 10 sixths. If you ever divide by a fraction, what do you do? Invert and multiply. So it's 1,000 times 6 tenths. That should be pretty simple. How many times does 10 go into 1,000? All right, so we get 600 meters. Is this an expected answer? I mean, whether or not it's the right number, I'm not asking, but is there something about this answer that says, okay, that makes sense? What about it makes sense? It got smaller. It got smaller. That's exactly where I wanted to go. It got smaller because what I know is the proper length is always the largest length. All right? I know the proper length is always the largest length. So, if I were to instead say that I have a rocket that's 400 meters, and it's traveling at a speed of 0.6 c per person on the Earth. How long is it? At this point, follow what we did there. I want you to get used to just grinding these out. Again, it's a rigged number, so it's going to come out fairly easily, but I want you to figure it out. You already got it, did you say? What did you get for gamma? Using the 0.6c, what did you get for gamma? What's that? 5 over 4. All right. Or 10 eighths, right? 5 over 4, 10 over 8. Yep, that's the right number for gamma. And then what do you do with your gamma once you have it and you know the proper length? You divide by it. So the 5 goes into the 400. 80, and you multiply by the 4 and get your 320. Uh, it, I mean, if it takes you a little while to get there, that's fine, but does any, is anybody not, you need to let me know because this is going to get way more complicated in a minute. This better not be the part that throws us. Anybody have any question on this at all? Cool. All right. Done your racing, and we're about to start on another journey. What's that? All right. So it turns out that if we were going to use the calculus to figure all this out, we have a relationship that shows how length change, and we have a relationship that shows how time changes. And we know that velocity can be written as changes in length over changes in time. For those of you who have some calculus, what we really are saying is we have this. 
if we apply the relativistic equations that we've learned to these and string them all out and put it together, we end up deriving a system of equations called the Lorentz transform. The thing about the Lorentz transform is most, a lot of it is, as they say, beyond the scope of this class. And um, so we're actually going to buy into that. And we're going to not do the whole thing. I'm just going to give you um, the, uh, the punchline, but I want to, if I can find the part I'm looking for, I want to tell you what page that to look on in your textbook. Well, gone past it. All right, on page 907 in your textbook, um, these are the equations we want. Okay, so basically let's talk about what this means. When we did the transforms earlier on, remember that I was writing u sub x. That was at the beginning of the chapter. Y'all do occasionally look at your notes, right? So we put u sub x, there is a u sub y, a u sub z. We're not going to go there. So keep this simple, we're going to just look at velocities in the x direction. So because of that, and I'm trying to match your author so I don't make too much confusion, your author drops the sub x subscript. Notice, we had stuff like I mean, they were very simple equations that we had when we were doing the Galilean transformation. These look a lot uglier. All right? But the, the fact of the matter is, these equations I would give you, our problem is to figure out how to use them and how to apply them to make things work. What I'm claiming is that if I have an S and an S prime system, and that V is the velocity of this system, if in this system there's something that moves with the speed of U prime, because I'm in the S prime system, what velocity U would I measure in this system? Or if conversely, I had something moving in this system at a speed U, what velocity would it look like in this system? So u prime represents the same object as u. It's just that u prime represents the velocity in this system, and u represents the velocity in this system. And I'm talking in circles, am I? Now, do most of you follow what I was just saying there? Basically, we're just saying one object is moving in the universe, and the person in the S system sees u, the person in the S prime system sees u prime. If I know one of them, how do I find the other? That's the thing. We want to be able to tie those things together. Because, guys, if I have a meter stick and I'm zipping past you and somebody says, oh, that is an 80 centimeter stick, I want to know how long it's going to look in any other reference frame. So this is what the whole thing does, is it allows me to say, if I know what it is in that reference frame, I can find out what it is in any other reference frame. So this gives us power to understand what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to um, lovely pictures here. I'm going to have a rocket, again, flying past the Earth. And I'm going to go ahead and not worry about the length of the rocket right now. But I'm going to have somebody in the rocket standing at the uh, back end of the rocket. And they're firing a positronium gun. I don't know. I'm trying to make something up. All right? And it moves forward at a speed of 0.6c in the reference frame of the rocket, while the rocket itself is moving at 0.8c in my reference frame. So this is seen by her, this is seen by me. Do you get the picture? Do you understand what my picture is? So I see a rocket ship flying past at 0.8 C. I see a guy in the back of the rocket firing a, 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 a gun of some particles. And this guy thinks that, that the particles are moving forward at 0.6 C. Okay. What speed do I think that the particles are moving forward? Now, if it weren't for relativity, what speed would I see? If it were back to Galilei and stuff, I have the speed of the rocket ship is 0.8, and then to add to that the speed of the gun, which would give me what? 1.4c. Why is that a problem? Because it's going faster than light, right? 1.4c would be, 1c is the speed of light, 1.4c is faster than light, not going to happen. So how do I take this information and tie it to my equations? Well, let me name some things. What letter do I assign to point 8C?
Well, I can't redo anything until I pick some frames. So I need two frames, S and S prime. Which one do you want to choose for your S frame? The guy on the ground is usually giving you your best one. He's the observer that's doing the looking, right? So that's usually your best thing. So we'll choose the S frame to be the guy here on the ground. All right? That means that we'll make the rocket the S prime. We'll make this guy the S. Okay. Then what is point eight C? What letters? What idea is point eight C? V. Does everybody see that? V is the relative speed of the reference frame. Now, if I had chosen the rocket to be the S frame and the guy on the ground to be the S prime frame, what would be the velocity of the S prime frame? Negative V. Negative V. Because it's moving in the other direction compared to the rocket. Okay? So, in my equations, what is point six C in letter? What's that? It, what frame am I in? I'm in the F, yes. So I'm in the S prime frame, so it's going to be U prime because it's the speed measured in the prime frame. So let's put things I know. V is point eight C. U prime is point six C. And what do you think the question is I'm going to ask you in terms of letters? What do I want to know? U. What's U? All right. To do that, I come to my equations. It's pretty easy. This is the one I need to choose. Now, if I do this correctly, does it make sense to you that the answer I get will not be greater than the speed of light? So let's work our way through. So I'm saying u is equal to u prime, which is 0.6c, plus v, which is 0.8c, divided by 1 plus u, which is 0.6c, uh, v, 0.8c, all over c squared. c, c, and c squared all cancel. Does that make sense? I have this two c's on the top, the c squared in the denominator, they cancel. What's 8 times 6? All right, so 0.8 times 0.6 is 0.48, right? So this becomes 1.4c divided by 1.48. All I did is I multiplied the 0.8 and the 0.6 together, got the 0.48, added one to it. Brown. This one? Thank you. Yes, I meant to put that there. Otherwise, we're in trouble, aren't we? We don't have, we know, you know, good, good eye. Good eye. Excellent. All right, so yeah, that has to be a U prime. So, just looking at this, 1.4 divided by 1.48 clearly is going to be less than 1, isn't it? And somebody, if you punch that up, uh, this is what you get? It's 0 0.95. 0.95? Okay, so 0.95C. All right, so, really fast, but... Not, uh, not so fast that it shocks us in terms of it didn't see the speed of light, right? We can't have, it can't see the speed of light. That would, that would mess us up. There we follow all the steps on that. So now here's, I've done one. I'm going to have you do one, and here's how it's going to go. Is we're going to switch, and the guy in the rock is going to come to this end and fires the gun this way. Remember that it makes it negative. All right. And solve this for u again. All right. So the only thing that's changed is that my u prime became negative 0.6. So go ahead and solve that.
repeat the question again, please? Yes. So all I did is I fired the beam back the other way inside the rocket, and I want to find out how fast this beam is moving in this direction. So you're looking for U again, given U prime. So help me write this up. What I say U is equal, what's the first thing I write? Negative 0.6c, and then still plus 0.8 because it's still moving to the right, and then in the bottom, we have a negative sign again because of the first term, right? The c's cancel, and I have point. Point 0.2c on the top, 0.8 minus the 0.6 on the top, and on the bottom I have 1 minus 0.48, which is 0.52, and the answer ought to be very close to um, 0.4c, but, okay, 0.38 for the final answer. Now, it's positive, right? The final answer is positive, which means that even though this guy's firing negatively, I see it moving to the right. How is that possible? How can how can he fire it this way and I still see that it went that way? <laughs> exactly. So a way to look at this, this is a dumb example, but I have I'm full of dumb examples. Alright? So you're driving down the freeway and a guy standing on the side of the freeway rolls a bowling ball. Alright? And this is going to be slightly different from what we have here. Let's say that he, he rolls in the direction that you're moving. Alright? So he rolls in the direction that you're moving. So I'm driving on the freeway, he rolls in the same direction that I go. And my problem is, because I have a brain, I look at him and I know very well that he rolled the bowling ball in the direction I'm going, so I actually see it move that direction. But if I really am a dispassionate observer, does it make sense to you that the bowling ball actually moves backwards at all, at all, all points? Because do I, do I go past the bowling ball? Yeah. So if the bowling ball isn't moving backwards, how do I get past it? So from my point of view, it has to look like it's going behind me. Even though I know the direction he rolled, I still see it move backwards. All right? And in this case, it's like the opposite of that. Even though they shoot it that way, because they're moving faster that way than they're shooting this way, it still ends up moving forward. Now, if it weren't for relativity, my answer should be what? 0.2c, right? That it should move forward at 0.2c, the difference between those two numbers, 0.8 minus 0.6. But we get 0.38c, which is significantly different. So you can't dodge the relativistic bullet here. You have to actually be sure you use these equations. Little doctoring, I know you're going to get tired of this, but see, if you get up to speed on this, then on the next test, which is the last one, you should, oh, I know this stuff, and you should roar through rather than get stuck. So all I want to do now is flip numbers. So I want this to be 0.8c and 0.6c. And resolve for your U. Yeah. You said it's moving forward, but. Right. So, what I'm saying is that what happens is if, if you're in a car driving down the freeway at freeway speeds and somebody throws a ball backward in the car. Somebody at the side of the road won't see the, won't see the ball move backward, they'll see it move forward, but not, it won't move forward as fast as the car does. So in other words, it's going to still go with the car, mm -hmm. but it'll be behind where it started. But for me on the side of the road, at all points the ball moves forward, even though the person threw it backward. So one thing, yeah, don't get rid of the negative sign. The negative sign is essentially important here. Yeah, the negative from your point C. Oh, the answer is negative. Yeah, the, answer, the final answer is negative. All right. So the numbers turn out to be the same. All that happened is the signs flipped, didn't they? All right. So the, at the end of the day, what happened? This ended up being a negative 0.38C. Wait just a minute. So you mean to tell me 
that this guy is going this way and firing it, and now this time it's negative, it wasn't negative before? And the answer is yes, because what happens is this, the beam was going faster than the actual rocket ship, so the net effect is he actually does see it go the other direction. So now, whoever throws the ball into the back seat throws faster than the car is driving, which means that I would actually see the, car, the ball move backward rather than forward. So, it, I mean, this is the whole idea of relativity, right? Relative to what? Is it positive or negative? The only thing is we can't simply do it without the equations. <laughs> All right. So, anybody have any question on these? Because now is for the fun stuff. All right. We've been having fun all along. How, yeah. how, how, how can it get any more fun? Okay, so here's the setup. Back to having the rockets. All right, I'll make this rocket a little more realistic. 